Hello and welcome to my Nikon Z8 video showing you exactly what the fault is in this camera and no you should not attempt to fix this yourself and this is one of the reasons why I've waited so long to post this video it is just purely to demonstrate what the fault is so there is no need to worry should you go at it should you do it yourself absolutely definitely not this camera needs to go in for a service recall so please do that do not adjust this camera yourself <laughs> So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's wrong with the Nikon Z8. Now, the one thing I should stipulate here is I have not repaired this camera myself. I am not going to repair this camera myself. And the only way you can know for absolute certainty if a camera is repaired or not is to actually perform the repair and to check it and test it out afterwards. So I am not 1000% certain this is it, but I am 99% certain it is it. Now, I've got quite a few people asking me about the mechanical shutter. And oh my God, there's these two metal things hanging down from the shutter themselves. Is my camera faulty? And the simple answer is, no, it's not. So just to show you something I shared in a previous video, here is the 35mm f1.8 lens, not rotating and not locking in place. You can quite clearly see it only turns about 10, 15 degrees and will not turn anymore. So how I got the lens to work is, I simply just got another lens, my 24 to 70 f2.8, popped it on, turned it and it locked in place quite easily and perfectly. So absolutely no problem, just try it again, works beautifully every single time. Now popping on the 35 f1.8, turn it, rotate it, and it locks in place. So there is a consistency issue here. There is something that is not locking in place or not letting the lens turn and move into position. So what is it? So let's have a look at the mount itself, what exactly makes contact with the lens and what could possibly be causing the problem. You can see the lens contacts on top, the mechanical shutter is there, that's the mount itself and you've got the four screws holding it in place. Now all of those seem to be absolutely perfect. What else is involved in the lens mechanism itself? You can see the slots where the actual bayonet pops in place. I checked all those, they all seem fine and inside here are the leaf springs. These are tension springs that provide a bit of resistance to the lens rotating. So as you can see, that's one tension spring. As the bayonet goes in and twists over, it hits that tension spring, and that tension spring is what's gonna slow down or offer just that bit of resistance to the lens rotating. The one thing you might notice is it is at about a 10 to 15 degree angle from where the lens goes into the actual Z mount itself. Over on the second side then, we have our second spring, and that spring looks fine too as well. Absolutely nothing wrong there as far as I can see. Now, rotating around to the bottom, we have our third leaf spring. And I think this is the leaf spring that is causing the problem. You'll notice immediately if you've been watching closely on the other ones, that this leaf spring is actually dipping just down below the edge of the flange itself. Now, and this would explain exactly why this problem comes and goes at times. Because springs are variable, and when the tolerances are this close, it's going to cause problems at times. So I got an SD card here, and I want to show you two things. Firstly is, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the SD card in here and watch how it just fits in along that flange there now. And it is just, it is, the SD card is actually nearly the perfect size for this. So it's simulating how it would actually fit in to the actual mount itself. Now if I just lift that up fractionally, and it is really fractionally, and just pull this over along here now you'll see, it goes away, it goes away, bang, stuck. It's cut. So that is our leaf spring just sitting fractionally proud catching the edge on my 35mm f1.8. So that is what's causing the lens to jam. It is not locked in position. The leaf spring is stopping it. So that is the issue. And if you look at the edge here on the 35mm f1.8, you can see that actually is quite sharp. It's quite a clean, it's quite a neat edge. Now, if I just pop out my 105mm here now, so then, and just try and do exactly the same thing, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pop it up against, up against the edge here, and you can see the 105mm is slightly, fractionally rounder. And I think it's that slight rounding, and also there is a slight bit more of a gap in the flange mount too as well for the SD card, because if you watch this here now, you can see there is a small bit more room for the SD card itself. I'm going to pop it back in the 35mm here now and just jiggle the SD card and you'll see that is, that is really tight. That is not going anywhere. It fits in absolutely perfectly inside there. So it is exactly the right weight. Whereas when I pop it into the 105mm here now, look at that jiggle. 
that is actually moving quite a bit more. So there is just a fraction more depth in the flange on 105 mil than there is in the 35 mil. But it is absolutely minute the difference between the two of them. I think it's that and also the slight rounding on the edge that is causing the problem with the 35 mil f1.8 in comparison to the 24 to 70 70 to 200 all the other lenses i have the 35 mil the edge of the bayonet mount is just slightly sharper it's not it's not quite as round and also the tolerance isn't as much as again you can see there now that is moving quite a bit on the 105 mil whereas when i go back to the 35 mil there now that is that is just crazy tight in comparison there is no comparison there so there is a difference in tolerances between the 35 mil and 105 mil as regards lens depth and that was all brought, that was all shown just with an sd card so again just showing the actual leaf spring itself there now as you can see it just looks like it is fractionally dipping down there but again you pop a lens on pop it back out long again and that's going to change because if that leaf spring is variable and if it's not sitting correctly in position or if it isn't manufactured to correct tolerances or the correct amounts of springiness we'll say that it's actually not going to sit right now if i just quickly just try and pop that up with an sd card please do not try this at home that is going to help pull it up and there you have it that looks better already which is absolutely crazy. So it is a leaf spring is causing the problem. And these leaf springs are absolutely vital. So with a bit of education and an SD card to as well, of course, I've helped to show you what's wrong with the Nikon Z8. But I would still send it in for the service advisory as soon as possible. I just purely brought this video out just to give people a small bit of peace of mind. Now, if you're worried about the lens actually falling off the camera, I do not believe this is going to happen or possibly can happen because the lens locking pin has nothing whatsoever to do with this. It's a completely different mechanism. So once the lens goes on, twists, rotates, and locks in place, that lens is 100% solid. It is not going to come off unless someone presses the lens release button and then pulls it out. Now, of course, the one exception to all this is a person who's completely new to mounting a lens on an SLR, digital SLR camera, or a mirrorless camera, that might not understand how far the lens needs to rotate for it to lock on, and also that you'd actually hear a physical click to as well. So that that is one thing. But if you've been putting lenses on cameras for any bit of time, I guarantee you, you will notice this difference. It is like the lens only rotates one third of the way. You are guaranteed to see, guaranteed to see this straight away. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my Nikon Z8 and Nikon playlist series. So um, see you out there and see you soon.